King P here and Stelio 7 and welcome to another episode of This Week in Metropolis. On this episode we have Nathan Caton who is a stand-up comedian, a writer and a huge Turtles fan. Yeah, massive fan. I mean his room's covered in it. He showed us stuff as well which you'll see in the episode if you're watching this. Um, you might have seen Nathan on Mock the Week and Russell Howard's um, Good, is it Good News? I believe so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, he's, he's a pretty big deal. So, um, lovely bloke. Really nice to speak to him. Enjoy the show. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to welcome you to This Week in Metropolis. Well, welcome, Nathan, to This Week in Metropolis. This is our third episode of Season 6. Um, and um, we really appreciate you joining us on the show. Um Obviously, known for being uh, an awesome UK stand-up comic. Um, Thank you, sir. Oh, you're welcome. But also, um, a degree in architecture. So that's the main reason why we got you on. So tell us about architecture. <laughs> oh, man, I didn't say I was good. <laughs> I can tell you how to fail. <laughs> did, um, did, no, I, did, did you I get did a degree I'll, then? Yeah, no, I got my degree. That's... Um, by the time I I graduated, I, I was spending more time in the comedy clubs than like doing my coursework and stuff. So, yeah, yeah. Um, if you want a building designed, uh, maybe source other architect before coming to me. <laughs> but if you come to me, then I know you you are really scraping the bell. But if we want you to do that and tell us jokes at the same time, yeah, can you do architecture comedy like, and infuse the two together? That's the oh yes. Yeah, yeah. The, the old, the old gold mine that is architecture. Oh yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> mate. Oh, mate. Oh, so many, so much material about you know bricks. <laughs> <That's> it. <laughs> so you, you said you spent a lot of time in the comedy. Is that why you went down the the path that you went down? Because obviously it's two massive extremes. Um. Yeah. I mean. Well, I guess by the time I graduated, um, I was making I wasn't making like massive money, but I was making like like part time change. I wasn't like I wasn't changing the world, you know. I was like, yeah. "Hey, mom, treat yourself, make it rain." <laughs> no, <I'm> like, <laughs> um, but I was I was starting to get a bit of change. I thought, okay, well, let me, let me see where this goes. You know, I've, mm. I've I've always wanted to try it, and I've come so far and I've got this far. And I'm, when I'm still young enough, you know, let's let's see what happens. If, if it doesn't work out, I've got my degree to go back on. You yeah. know. I could do something design based, but for now, you know, let's let's just see what happens. And then, like, fifteen years later, I'm, I'm still here blagging it, mate. <laughs> How did you first get? <laughs> How did you first get on the stage? Then, what was that turning point? Uh, turning point. Okay, my turn. I guess the turning point for me. Well, the first gig I did, I was I was fourteen. It was like a, wow. a talent show, a talent show at a, uh, at a church. Right. But I didn't really do anything after that. I did that gig, and after that, I didn't do anything because I was, I was, I'm too young. I to, you know, my family drilled it into me. That's not a job. Get, yeah. Education. Get yeah. yeah. Go and get a proper job. I was like, all right, cool, cool, cool. Um, so when I was 19, it was uh, during the summer holidays, after my, my first year of doing architecture, um, I didn't have a summer job, didn't have a part-time job. I was like, oh, I, I want to do something. So I thought, well, I'd give comedy a go. Cause I, Still in the back of my mind, it's like I, I'm, something I want to try and do if I can, you know. Yeah. Um, I bought a Time Out magazine, I think it was. Um, I don't think they still have it now, but back in when I started, uh, they used to have like all the, the comedy club listings. Yeah, I know what you mean. And someone had like open spots, call this number, you know, and talk to I don't know, Dave or whoever, whoever, if you want a spot. Um, so I called up this one club, there's an old street, and they were like, yeah, come down, uh, do like a, a five to ten minute spot. Uh, and yeah, that, that was my first gig. It was, uh, it was awful. Like, honestly, like I died on my hole. Like it was painful. Um, but I enjoyed just being on stage. Oh, I've done it! I've done stand up yeah. in front of strangers. Mm. Um, so even though even though I died, like I, don't know, I, I felt like I was on top taste. of the world. Yeah, yeah. It's like, well, I, I know it's like to die. So surely it can't get any worse. Yeah. You know, the only way, the only way <laughs> should be up. I've lost all yeah. dignity. You not, know. not just that, you've got to have some <laughs> proper balls to get up on stage and, and do that sort of thing. I remember going when I was younger to um, the comedy club in London and, and one of my mates got up on, on a gong night. Oh, yeah. And, okay. and literally he, he planned this um, this joke out. And, and if, if he was to tell a joke now, you would laugh. But I think it just had too much 
legs in it and it got to that point where you're waiting for the punchline right? and he got gonged out and we're just like oh it's got to feel terrible but yeah. at the same time you know sometimes that can be the making of you like you said that can be the only ways up yeah but then th- those gong nights I mean I've, I've never done one of those gong nights because I was like no I'm not doing it because some of them like it's not really a gig it's just like just crowd control really isn't it? Like, <laughs> they can they can gong you off if they don't like you it's like, look at your shoe gong <laughs> um <laughs> Sorry, the language. Um, but yeah, um, so th- th- those gong shows, I-, I haven't done any of those. But um, but yeah, just once you're on stage, like you speak to any comedian and they'll, and they'll tell you, well, once you come off stage, this it's like a drug. Yeah. It's the adrenaline that you've got going through. It's like I want more. I want, it. and that's how right. I felt when I was back when I was what, 19. Did my, did my first gig. I was like, yeah, I, w- I want to do that again. Even though I, I didn't get the laughs that I planned, and even though it didn't go as well as I, as I planned. Just the fact that I was on stage, like, cool, cool, cool. Yeah. I want more of that. Do you prefer Amazing. the the stand up stuff more so than the TV stuff? Do you do quite a few panel shows? I've seen you on Mock the Week. I've seen you on a few other ones where you'll do stand up. Like, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. You've been on Russell Howard stuff and things like that. Mm, so, mm. do you prefer doing your your stand up in comparison to that, or? Um, I I enjoy both, but what I would say is that the stand up is when you strip down everything it always comes back to stand up yeah. stand up is my bread and butter stand up is, is what what gets me the tv stuff what gets me radio etc etc so at the end of the day i'm always going to be a stand-up comedian that's always going to be me yeah. um I, I enjoy everything else but it, it all derives from the fact that i'm a stand-up yeah. comedian yeah. Well, one thing I was talking about with james i, I recently i saw you on um a program back in the noughties that, that you oh, yeah, did yeah. it was like a, like a reminiscent thing when you do one thing I've always wondered when you're watching these those sort of programs do they I, I take it they show you a clip of what you're talking out about beforehand like do they say have a look at this and then we're going to talk about it because there's so much stuff I, I just think there's no way they remember that advert from I don't know <laughs> 1983 <laughs> or, or whenever it was is that how um, it works most of the time, they they'll like, will give us snippets or they'll give us notes about what we're going to talk about. Sure. Um, and then sometimes they'll spring an extra clip on, on us, like just to see our get our instant reactions. Yeah. Um, but yes, yeah, so sometimes they do. They 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 prep us so we kind of know, we get a gist. You know, we're going to talk about these music videos, or we're going to talk about this yeah. and so and so and so to kind of point us in the, the right direction. Yeah. No, it makes sense. Is there, do you think there's that with those sort of things with the, the but over Christmas there's quite a few flashback things, probably because of COVID and they've got to recycle like sort of material and stuff. Mm. What what do you think the attraction is to those sort of things? Like, you know, in the noughties I take it as a point where you were younger and you know, can reminisce about. What, what do you think is the importance um, in that nostalgia, I guess? Yeah, well, also, especially now, coming times where we're all locked True. down and stuff, you always want to think about, oh, I remember when I could go Good out. Days. You know what yeah. I mean? It's like, That's when, it. I mean, <laughs> when going to a nightclub was a thing as opposed to just queuing up outside Tesco's like it's a nightclub. You know what? That, that, <laughs> that, that is one thing I've been hungering for recently. I just said that no, I'll listen to this. No, not Tesco. <laughs> so, <laughs> Tesco meal deal. My God, it's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, nightclubs. I keep listening to certain songs and thinking, man, that that would be a dream, absolute oh, dream. You know, yeah. Being in a, just packed in there and music and oh, God, yeah. No, no. Before the pandemic, right, I like because I was always gigging. I would, I wouldn't really go out that much. Like yeah. anytime I got invited somewhere, it's like, oh, when is it? Friday night. You know, oh, I'm gigging. Friday, yeah. Saturdays. I'm always gigging. I'm, but after the pandemic. I'm going to every single party. Yeah. Even if I'm not invited, you're going to see Nathan Cater <laughs> at the party, I swear. Yeah. I'm gate crashing anything and everything <laughs> I can, man. I'm going hard. But this is the thing with, with the pandemic. You've, I think everyone's kind of probably realised how much they didn't appreciate them things mm. before. Like, like yeah. I mean, me yeah. and Matt worked together. Um, the last time we probably went out was a Christmas do last year. A long while you know, ago, it was, yeah. It was, it was, you know, quite some time ago, but you've managed to keep yourself relatively busy doing the same thing that we're doing. You've got a couple of podcasts that you do. Um, yeah, yeah. Can you, can you tell us a bit about them? Uh, okay, so one podcast I do is called uh, Give Me Some Good News. 
um, sound rebel, uh, bigging them up. Um, so it's basically just about having a comedian on um, each episode and they share with us a good piece of good news. It could be from, from the news they've seen or from their lives, from social media, but just something that just puts a smile on people's face that kind of cheers them up as opposed to hearing more. Covid, Covid, yeah. or, or, or Trump, or Brexit, or whatever. Yeah. So yeah, we've, we've had various guests on: Russell Kane, Jason Manford, Joe Lyser, and um, yeah, we've had funny stories. Um, uh, Joe Lyser talking about like growing cauliflowers, something <laughs> random that he, that made him <laughs> smile. Um, we had a um, comedian, uh, Tian and Dua. He talks about how um, he, he managed to potty train his kid because once his kid uh, took a shit on the floor and he stepped in it barefoot. So, <laughs> 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 oh god! That was, that was it was good. That was great news. Yeah, progress. His kid is potty trained. Yeah, so yeah, it's just, just random stuff like the kinds of stuff that we can just smile and giggle about. So we don't have yeah. to kind of head all the, the doom and gloom of the news all the time. I love okay. that because that's kind of the the whole thing when me and Matt started our podcast was all about we, we're talking about things that have happened in the past week. But it was we wanted to avoid all that kind of heavy, serious stuff because there's enough of it mm. out there, and it mm. was all about the other little bits going on in the world. The stuff yeah. we yeah. like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And you've been and doing then, and virtual gigs, sorry. I've... No, I was, I was just going to yeah. say he also does um, an Englishman and Irishman. And a yeah, 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 oh. yeah. Do that as well. Um, for myself, um, Susie Mack, who's a Scotswoman, and uh, Billy Halpin. He's a producer, an Irish producer in LA. And again, just come, we just come together, we chit chat about funny stories we've seen, um, things that happen to us, which aren't, which isn't COVID related or anything like that. Just, just light hearted, funny stuff. Something that, you know, can just cheer you up and, you know, get you through these hard times. Mm. Yeah. Podcasts Indeed. have become massive in this time. You know, I think we've, with lockdown and everything, I think people have thought, what else can I do? And although mm. we started before all of this, I, I feel like now, I think, isn't there something like 900 million different podcasts or Amazing. something stupid? Like, you but, know, yeah. you, it's, there's, there's a lot of competition, but Everyone's I mean, I don't, podcast, yeah. I, I don't even <laughs> see it as that. I see it as a, as a good way of meeting new people, mm. talking rubbish a lot of the time, yeah, yeah. you know, but, but also finding out some really interesting stories at the same time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely, definitely, man. Um, yeah, it's, 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 it's a way to you know get through and just escape, really, isn't it? Um, that's, that's that's what we need at the moment. You know, we need mm-hmm. we need all the positivity we can, all the things we can to kind of just you know get through all this, man. Exactly. Okay. And how have you found doing the virtual gigs? So, if it, is it difficult without that interaction? Of um, it's better now. When I first started doing the virtual gigs, like March, April, because like, yeah. as soon as the virtual gigs came up, I was like, yeah, I'm, I'll, I'll do it. Because I, I love doing comedy and I can't just I can't just sit around doing nothing. Like, yeah. If I, like, so I would do those virtual gigs or just like talk to my girlfriend and I don't want to talk to her anymore. Bored of each other. It's like, oh, um, so yeah, I was like, I'll, I'll do them. Um, when I first did them, the first few Zoom gigs I did, uh, there was no audience. Right. Uh, well, but the audience, but they were all like on mute, or they had their cameras turned off, sure. or they were watching the stream link. So I was performing just like to the camera, yeah. But you couldn't hear nothing, and that was so soul destroying. It was like doing yeah. my first gig all over again because there's no reaction, there's no interaction. You just, it feels like <laughs> instead of a gig, it was like I was having a breakdown. It's like a monologue. <laughs> like, this guy's gonna jump out the window any moment now. Um, <laughs> but then the next few gigs, the, the, I think promoters and comedy clubs start realizing it's better to have people with their cameras on and, and their yeah. mics on so they would have like a, a front row which we've got now but i've got like oops, I don't know, 10 to 20 people who've got their um their mic their, their mics are unmuted so sure. you can hear them laughing you could if yeah. you want to talk to someone you can say okay uh so and so and then who else controlling the gig will spotlight them so you can <laughs> chat to them and stuff and I, cool. I like it now I've, yeah. I've, done, I've done a lot of them now um, it's got yeah. to the point now where like sometimes I've done gigs where I don't even do my material because I'm just talking to everyone you put on gallery view pick out someone you know someone who's Brilliant. interesting someone who's got a funny background you know some, someone who's in a weird place in their home and yeah, yeah you just, you just chit chat and well, sometimes people have their mics unmuted and like they don't realise that they're unmuted so they're talking we are yeah. thinking that they're watching TV, but you you hear you hear some some shady stuff from people's homes, man. <laughs> <And> like, 
<laughs> it's all good material for the next gig, though, isn't it? Yeah. Or, or, or... <laughs> or even even that gig itself, you just like, who's that? You know, I, I did one gig where um, someone they they were watching me, but they didn't realize they were unmuted. And they're like, is he a rapper? He looks like a rapper. And it's like the whole, <laughs> next five minutes comparing me to every black rapper they could think of. <laughs> 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 but when you're in it, you're thinking, I see, that's quite a nice, um, nice comparison. I'll, I'll take that one. Yeah, but then I was saying, like, <laughs> like, the rappers that they were saying, it's like, well, why would this certain rapper be performing a comedy gig for you? Like, how, that you how signed up for? Times? Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> this rapper has fallen really on hard times. Oh my gosh. Um, so, yeah, but it's, it's all jokes, it's all jokes in the end, so it's all good. Um, Another thing that Matt told me that you've done, which I never knew, mm. is um, Celebrity Mastermind. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, gosh, and, that was a while ago now, wasn't it? About mm. it? years ago. Right, and, and I mean, it's something me and Matt don't really have a lot of conversations about because Matt isn't really a football fan, but I'm a huge football fan. I know you're okay. a Brentford fan. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Um, that's well, right. I mean, I don't think our paths have crossed in football terms because I'm a Man United fan, but... Um, <laughs> Oh, from, I S- show off. from Essex, <laughs> you know, it's standard. Um, however, me and Matt, we we both relocated from Essex, not together, um, but we both relocated from Essex to Norfolk. Uh, so I'm quite a, a big follower of Norwich, who uh, okay. a team that you would have um, yeah, yeah. had more encounters with. Um, so how did you, what I want to know is I haven't seen the episode of Celebrity Mastermind. How did you get on, and why was the Premier League your? Um, okay, so I got it. I think just from my agent, really. Uh, someone from the BBC got in touch with my agent and said, um, when Nathan Case and I had to do Celebrity Mastermind, I was like, yeah, right, cool, I'll do it. Um, they like, you can choose your topic. Um, but this, first of all, they said, the questions on Mastermind, for Celebrity Mastermind, will be a bit easier. Um, right. I, don't, I don't think they're trying to say that celebrities are thick as. <laughs> I was going to say, why is that? <laughs> <laughs> what yeah. is your name? Uh, yes, okay. uh, oh, I know this one. Oh, what did my mum call me? What did my mum call me? <laughs> Boy, boy. No, okay. um, yeah, so they were like, "Yeah, the question will be easier." So I was like, "Okay, fine, I'll do it." They're like, "You can choose choose your uh, topic." So um, I did. Uh, I suggested turtles at first. Yeah, right? but great. Um, oh man, I would I would have smashed it. Um, but then someone else had already got in there. They suggested something about movies, so they were like, "We can't have two like TV shows, movies." So it's like, what else? I was like, well, I, I like sports. I'm a big sports fan. I like football. Um, so they, they suggested Premier League. I was like, okay, cool, I'll do it. And then um, they gave me like all these books to read about the Premier League. Really? Yeah. Um, which, like, I, I got them and I read them. But then when I did it, the, the show, they asked me the question. It was stuff that I would have just known anyway. Yeah. Um, so I was like, okay, I'm happy, but at the same time, you know what I mean? Like, that's a relief, spent, isn't it? Spent money more on books. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so yeah, the, the Premier League, I got, I got like I think it was 12 out of 12. Uh, the general knowledge that's where it all went downhill yeah. <laughs> that's where they get you exactly turns out I know I know a lot about football and turtles nothing else <laughs> <laughs> oh well <laughs> it's funny they've gone with architecture yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so it's how, how to fail architecture or <laughs> and another thing that I stumbled across when I was researching you was that you was yeah. a host on a show called Video Game Nation which again oh, was yeah. a little while ago. I'm, I feel like I'm surprising you with some of this information. <laughs> now, me and Matt are huge video game fans, yeah. but it's but it's not something I've ever heard of. So what, 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 yeah. what was it? What was the show about? Because just from reading about it, it sounded really interesting. Um, so we reviewed uh, various video games that were popular or just come out, and then um, people send in like niche games I think that we would review or look at and we would then at the end we'll play a game the two hosts play a game other uh, with each other against computer or against each other it's basically yeah. just a like video game geeking out basically yeah was that an interest um, you had beforehand yeah, yeah well I, I was a massive gamer like in my teens and early 20s and then as the comedy started getting busy and busy I kind of fell out of it yeah. But then during lockdown, I've got back into it, like um, like FIFA, especially uh, FIFA and NBA 2K. Um, yeah. So yeah, I've, I've I've always I've always had a console, like from the age of like eight, I've always had at least one console that I just kind of just like geek out on. 
Yeah. What have you got at the moment, console-wise? PS4. 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 Um, I'm waiting for the PS5 price to drop down a bit before I jump in. I'm tempted to jump in, but I don't. Are they back in stock? Uh, no, I'm trying. I'm trying to get one and slowly. They're, they're like gold dust. Yeah, I might have to wait, but I'll wait a little yeah. bit. I tell you something. Like, I've um, I've always been an Xbox um, fan, and I got the Series X. Mm. It is just like going from a uh, an Xbox One to a Series X. It's like light years. You <laughs> think you, you just switch on? Think this is the future. But you switch on, and then it's on. You're in the game. You're ready to go. Just no load times. Amazing. Yeah, but, amazing. but then when you see the PS5, though. You know what I mean? Oh, no, yeah, it's ugly. I, I mean, I'm not a massive fan of how it looks. I think it looks a bit like a massive router, but... They're saying that the Series X is just a big block. It's just box. a block. So, yeah. you know, yeah. I was just going to say, what are your thoughts on the latest FIFA, Nathan? FIFA 21? Um, I, I haven't got it. I haven't played it. I'm on FIFA 20. Really? Yeah. Really? The reason well, don't James waste will money. talk you out of it. Yeah, James yeah, don't will waste talk you money. out of it. I mean, I'm an avid FIFA player and yeah. um, I feel really disappointed with 21. Maybe it's because it's it's kind of that kind of, it was released on both and I'm, I'm thinking on the PS5 it's going to be a lot better. But mm, mm. Well, I've got <clears> um, from the reviews, because I checked the reviews out and it didn't blow me away, so I was like, I'll wait still. Um, yeah. And also on FIFA 20, I've I've got Brentford to the Premier League and Champions League holders. I'm not going to give that up, so, so I'm going to carry on. <laughs> I'm going to ride this wave while I still can. So I'm going to continue with FIFA 20. Um, I think my brother or my mates told me that the, the defending on FIFA 21 is awful. Okay. So I was like, um, yeah. yeah. And nah, I, I, that, that really gets me. Because um, I, I, I remember like playing like FIFA 99 or 2000, 2001. You just press a button tackle and you get the ball yeah. whereas now you've got a jockey and position yeah, it's like, oh, it's, it's, oh my it. gosh just give me the ball <laughs> but you mentioned NBA, NBA games as well I've got um, what one have I got 2K20 I think I got I think I got last year's one mm. and that's the first one I've had for years and the, the actual kind of presentation of the game is incredible like oh, yeah. even like the, the pundits sitting around yeah. like the, the interval stuff is just like off the scale for a yeah. game, like you you do feel like you're watching a. In comparison to being a huge, I mean, I'm not a massive basketball fan, but the, you know, I, I think it was all because me and Matt watched the Last Dance, and it reminded mm. me of back in the day of um, <laughs> balls and everything. But yeah. you know, and and some of the perks of that game are the fact you can play as the classic teams and things like that. But mm. just the whole presentation of the game is like on another level compared to like FIFA and things like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like it's like you're you're living it. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, yeah. have you done a career mode on NBA? No, I've just, literally me and my little boy will just play a random exhibition game. That's about oh. as much as we've got on it. But well, that, I, I, like, I plan to. If you do like career mode and stuff like um, that, you you live the person's career off the court as well. Like you get to go back to his place and you see his, his apartment. It's like yo, <laughs> so I'm I'm, I'm probably, I feel like I'm paying bills. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we've we've got a section in our show called Question Mark. Hello, gentlemen. Thank you for having me on again. Um, my question this week is linked to the very sad passing of uh, Dustin Diamond, aged only 44, who obviously played Screech in Saved by the Bell. Um, and that got me thinking about Saved by the Bell and how much I enjoyed it. And then that got me thinking about um, what are your favourite sitcoms, possibly from when you were young. So um, Saved by the Bell was obviously one. Um, I think mine would probably be something like Keenan and Kel, which which I absolutely, absolutely loved. But yeah, so what would be your favourite sitcoms, perhaps as a child? Saved by the Bell was such an iconic show when, I mean, I'm 35 now and so is Mark, so... Growing up, that was one of our shows that we, we grew up watching, but he wanted to know what was each of our favourite sitcoms growing up. Yes, there's a, a few. <laughs> there's a few. Um, so what, did you both go for Saved by the Bell? Well, no, no. Mine, mine were probably... 
a lot of mine were based around Nickelodeon um, and shows uh, that awesome, I watched yeah. then. So, you know, Marx was actually, although Saved by the Bell was one of his favourites, his was actually Keenan and Kel. Um, <laughs> Who there's that one, Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, that was that was a great one. And, and when I started looking into what ones I actually watched, you know, I, I had a younger sister, so we, we kind of watched a, a variety of shows. It wasn't just kind of the, all the, the boy ones, but Marisha, who remembers that Usher was in that? I forgot was that Usher yeah, was a character in that. Yeah, Jeremy. Yeah. Um, like, it's I on Netflix it. at the moment. Is it really? Well, yeah. Marisha, I mean, there was Sabrina, there was... Um, sister, sister. Sister, sister. All of them Nickelodeon ones, but one left field for me, which uh, caught my eye and I went, I used to love that show. Do you remember Home Improvement? With, mm. um, Tim, Tim Allen. Allen. <coughs> what a show. I, I used to that. love that show. Didn't it have the... Yeah. Uh, that sort of noise on the show uh, in the... Um, in the, in the intro or whatever yeah. there's these noise that he made but I used to love that show I, so, I remember the um, there was a neighbour who was always there but you couldn't see his face <laughs> <and never saw laughs> yeah. yeah great show <laughs> what about you Matt? Um, I think um, probably the, the first one that sticks in my mind when I was younger and that turning point of sitting like in the evening watching a sitcom was something like Men Behaving Badly which with Neil Morrissey and um, Martin Clunes mm. and it was that I would I can't remember, I was probably 12 or 13 or, or probably a bit younger. And it was that first thing that I started watching when there was pretty rude jokes in it. Like, not, not, not like pre watershed rude, so nothing too heavy, but like watching and thinking, oh, he, he talks about, I don't know, boobs or, or whatever it was. <laughs> so that, that sticks in my mind. Um, but otherwise, I think one that I probably consistently watch it was Fresh Prince. So it was one that, you know, just yeah, but was yeah. there. Every, uh, I think, was it BBC Two about six or something? I don't know. Yeah. But, you know, yeah. watch it, watching that and just having that, that, that was really a, an escapism thing in a way as well. Cause like you're, you're there uh, for myself living in East London and, and like seeing someone in, in that sort of environment in that huge house and they, they look mm. cool and you're like, oh, that, that looks, yeah. It's just funny yeah. and the music and just, <coughs> just everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Definitely. What about you? Um, How about you, Nathan? I mean, uh, you, you, you're both kind of like, we're all crossing paths here, man, because I, I watch a lot, a lot of Nickelodeon, so Sister, Sister, um, which, is, again, that's on Netflix now as well. And um, during, was it was the last month, yeah, I, I, I rinsed it. So I watched like all six seasons, like within like, kind of all, four the, all the memories so. flooded back. Yeah. yeah, it was a go home, Marja. Oh, <laughs> um, all that stuff. Um, yeah, Keenan and Kel, I watched a lot of as well. Mm. Um, uh, oh, one show, right, which everybody hates Chris. You guys watch that? I love yeah, that. Um, yeah. That was oh, amazing. Yeah. I love that show. Um, I but, actually forgot about that until you said it, and it's so good, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah, it's a funny show. So I, yeah. I remember when it used to come on, my mum my used to say it was the only time me and my brother would be quiet for half an hour solidly. Could just be there. Just, um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, probably, probably Fresh Prince for me is probably the one. Like it just yeah. stands out. Um, it, it was funny. It was it had it had meaning to it as well. You yeah. Know, like some some of the episodes, like the the dad one, the dad episode. I mean, when uh, Will's dad leaves him at the end. Yeah. Like I mean, I watch that now. And I, I, I won't cry, but there's like there's something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To, yeah. No, so people, so <laughs> yeah. So allergies, allergies. <laughs> In January, what are, your, up. What, what are your thoughts on them? Um, because we actually brought up in, a, in an episode called quite some time ago that they're doing a kind of reboot of Fresh Prince, but in like a modern day setting. Have you seen any of that stuff? Not, uh, not, not, that it's been re not that it's been released. Yeah, not but... the reunion. I think they've they've recast it, haven't they? But mm. it's yeah. And I think, I think Will, Will Smith's it. involved as well, isn't mm. he? He's like producing or directing something like that. No, don't do that. <sighs> mm. It's no. going to be gritty, though. It's, I don't think it's going I, to be. I was going to say it. It's, it's going to flip it on its head completely. I'm, I'm very, I'm very wary of like when they try and reboot or redo mm. classics mm. from back in the day. It's like yeah. it was great back in the day. Do you know how good it's going to have to be to top it? Yeah, like, mm. exactly. If, if, if it's shit, do you know how many people are going to be gunning for you? Like, like um, yeah. I know they're, they're doing, they're doing a coming to America too. Yeah, I think it comes yeah, out yeah. next month, and it's like yeah. that, that's that's my favorite film. Like, yo, Eddie. Do yeah. not mess this up. I swear no, exactly. down, bro. So, if, yeah, we doing Fresh Prince. Mm. I mean, 
you gotta be funny. Whoever's playing the main character, Will, whoever it is, yeah. let's be funny. Because if he's not, right. I'll be the first one on Twitter give, trolling the hell out of you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Every day. It was, it was actually <laughs> uh, some guys in the States who kind of put a trailer together for a potential reboot. And I think Will Smith actually got word of it, checked it out Which and thought, this has got something. And he's he's now kind of the one who's pushing for it to be done. Mm. So it, you hope that it's got something in it for for Will Smith to be keen on um, doing yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. But I, is, I do is agree, it, though. Is it the same guy who did... Um, you know, there was a guy, he did like a, a rap of the Fresh Prince song. And Will Smith know. jumped on it and they did a rap together. Is it that same guy? Don't know. I'm not, not sure. Okay. Not sure. I'd need to look it up. I'll um, I'll find out the info and send it to you. But um, <clears throat> yeah, it's re- reboots are a very um, tricky thing to do, get around, and and sometimes it works, and sometimes it doesn't. And, and we we discussed prior to the show. You've got um, a big collection of um, turtles <laughs> yeah. memorabilia that's been mm. rebooted enough times in in mm. different ways. And I still yeah. don't think. I mean, I think you're a similar age to me. Yeah. I, I I don't think it has ever got to that level that it was when I was growing up. Not that I've followed it as closely, but from when it has, I mean, even the movies that came out that were the um, the kind of no. the lifelike ones, the Michael yeah. Bay I, ones. I, I thought that. that I thought <sighs> those, yeah. They're not, you know, no, no, nothing's going to be as well. It could be our age, our generation within bias, mm. but nothing's going to be as good as that, the 1990 movie. Well, I was going to say, I remember. The, the ones on your wall to your left, that's yeah. how I remember the turtles yeah. looking when when they're on T V. Yeah. yeah. Um but I quite enjoyed the, the watching in well no, two things in recent years. The, the Michael Bay films were all right. They were just a bit Michael Bay. Michael Bay ish. Really? Yeah. Throw loads of explosions into it. <laughs> But there was a cartoon um, version recently, like the animated version that they did not that long ago. I can't remember what it was called, but that was pretty good as well. Is it like um? Hold they on. were quite stylized looking. Like that one. Yeah, that one. I quite enjoyed yeah. that as well. Yeah. Oh no, yeah, that one's good. That, it's, it's, yeah. it's got uh, it's got quite a lot of comedy to it as well, which yeah. I, I enjoy that. Um, yeah, I've, that I've got, I've got the DVD box set of that as well, which I enjoy. Yeah. Um, but the movies, the Michael Bay ones, it's like. Like when, when they first said Michael Bay was going to be involved, I dreaded it straight away. I was like, yeah. oh gosh, here we go. I mean, Transformers number one was good, but then after yeah. that, it was like, mate, what are you doing? Yeah. yeah. I, so, I was watching um, them. Sorry, <laughs> to, 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 I was watching one of the more recent Transformer ones with Mark Wahlberg in. I caught the end of it on TV and I, I said to my sort of Elvis son, okay. There is no purpose for any of those characters being in it whatsoever because there wasn't <laughs> any plot. Honestly, like, there would be these robots fighting, and then someone would look at each other, another person, and say, "Yeah, you know, this is happening or something," and then yeah. poof, like, all going on, and then yeah. they'd run somewhere, and that'd be it. Crazy. Yeah. Well, I hope Just Michael Bay's listening. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Michael, we'd love you on. <laughs> show. We're big fans, um, but the, I mean the 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 problem is you see kind of what Marvel were doing with all the superhero films and how much success they've had, and you think these are the things that we grew up with and were big fans of the, the mm. cartoons of X Men and Spider Man and all them sort of things, and you see how well they've gone into film versions. Mm. How can you get it so wrong? Even DC, mm. are, you know, ruining it. Are you, are you a big Marvel or DC fan? I'm more Marvel myself. Good, uh, me too. DC, I don't mind DC, but it's Marvel kind of wipes the floor for me. It's smashed in it. Yeah. yeah. Have you, um, no spoilers, have you been watching WandaVision? No. You need to get involved in that. It's That's very interesting. Uh, yeah. Note it's, to it's, self. <laughs> <laughs> have, you, have you got Disney Plus? Yeah, I have now. That, well, there you go. It's, it's there. I mean, they're, um, there's only the first four available at the moment. They're kind of releasing, and they're only half an hour each, so you can so you can okay. smash for it. Plow through that, oh. yeah, pretty quick. Ah, cool. Who's, who, who's, who, who's your favourite Marvel character? Mm, that's a good one. I've never, never thought about that. Um, mm, it doesn't have mm, to be Marvel. Mm. You might have a, a if, if Batman's your favourite. 
No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no offense to Batman. No. <laughs> Gosh. Like Spy- it's either Spider-Man or Black Panther. Yeah. Um, who else? Oh, Hulk. There's so many characters. I mean, who else mm. is there? As you know, Hulk. Oh, Hulk. Hulk in the <laughs> um, in the Avengers film was funny as I like. Oh. Mm. Mm. Too, too many to choose there, from. There's, there's, there? Hulk, you're right with yeah. Hulk. We we started. <coughs> me and my wife have started watching from Iron Man and trying to go through them all again because she kind of phased out of it at some point and me and Matt just went to the cinema without her. But um, so so I'm trying to rope her in, although she does spend the majority of the time on her phone, which infuriates me. But it's fine. I can still watch it again and enjoy it. Uh, she, but, she's looking up the trivia about the yeah, film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's on IMDb. <laughs> but, but just Hulk with like them, them small moments with Hulk. Like there's a bit where him and Thor in the first Avengers kind of we beat up Loki or someone and then they're standing next to each other and Hulk just punches yeah 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 punches him out of the way like <laughs> well, um, that British. bit where Loki goes um, I am Loki you must bow down puny god yeah that's it yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> brilliant so what's what's the future then for Nathan Kate and what's other than the lockdown at the moment I mean tomorrow's probably going to be the same as today I'm guessing but <laughs> podcasts have you, have you started getting plans in the works for touring and things like that yeah yeah well I was starting to you know, plan my tour and then lockdown 3 happened so um, <clears throat> so I'm definitely going to tour I just don't know when yet um, but yeah I've got the new materials coming you know I've got, I've got stuff that's ready to go um, so a new tour show will be happening at some point in the future. Um, doing more podcasts, doing more stand gigs. I'm always going to be doing stand-up gigs. Um, writing as well, writing a few things uh, for TV and for radio uh, scripts and like TV shows and stuff. Um, so it's just just keeping busy as normal, mm. keeping busy, keeping content flowing. You know, keeping the profile up. Um, so people know, you know who I am and what I do. Um, yeah. And yeah, just, just continuing to hustle hard. <laughs> you mentioned in writing, another thing I yeah, noticed yeah, in thanks. your bio was Rest of Males, which having two boys, oh, yeah. remember watching Rest of Males. Awesome show. But what was your involvement <laughs> with that? I loved it. Um, I was, I wrote a few episodes um, in the ser- on the series. Uh, so one of the exec producers I worked with when I did my pilot, uh, Nathan Caton show on Paramount, now Comedy yeah. Central. And um, he saw me do stand-up as well, because he knew that I did a lot, a lot of like, stuff up, my West Indian family, whatever. Uh, when the Rastamas thing came up, he got in touch with me. He was like, can you bring your flavour and add it to you know yeah. what we do here? I was like, yeah, sure. Um, pitched a few ideas. They're like, hey, can you turn this into an episode, turn that into an episode? And then, yeah, that was it. Just kinda, that's how it came about. Yeah. That's awesome. Brilliant. It must be so cool seeing, you know, uh, I don't know, in, in that format, sort of thinking, I, I wrote that. That's, that's yeah. Really cool. Yeah. Yeah. Like, at the moment, um, I, I worked on another, like, a CBB show um, called Jojo and Grand Grand. Oh, yeah. Um, I've seen that. My, yeah, my, yeah. My, my youngest absolutely loved that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Again, I've written a few episodes of that. And when you watch it, it's like, oh, come. Like, I never thought that when I started doing stand up, I'll end up writing for a kid show like this. Yeah. yeah. But it's, it's fun. I enjoy it. It's, it's all good. That's so okay. different. Yeah. And I guess, I guess, like you say, it, it just it brings opportunities in that respect. And it's something else you can add to your repertoire of going, I've done this. Yeah. And it could lead to is, mm. is there something that you dream of doing in, like, you know, be it a movie or, you know, um, or this? Mm. It's definitely something I want to do. I've, I've mm. done a few little bits. Um, and I, I enjoy it. And when I say acting, not just comedy roles. Like I want to, I want to explore my range. You know, I want to do yeah. serious roles as well. Acting is definitely something I want to do. Um, what I would love to do is like something, something that combines like football and comedy, football and stand up. Because mm. I mean, there's soccer AM, but to be honest. It's not as funny as it used to be. You know, what I mean, I like back in back in the day, it was like you, you would. I would wake up early to watch it. Whereas mm-hmm. now, I'll, if it's on, I'll have a glance, but it doesn't get me in the same way. Yeah. But like, just in football in general, there's so much natural comedy and banter that doesn't necessarily get replicated on TV. So I love to do a show 
where I can I can combine the two. You know, I've Not seen your like... cl- your clips that you do where you'll have your voiceover. Um, there was one that I oh. saw the other day you done where there was two footballers who kind of challenged each other by the the touchline, and then and then you were voicing, "No, that's okay, that's okay, no boo." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, something yeah. like that. But it's just yeah. doing that. That sort of I completely agree. If you can do a bit of voiceover work in a in a joking way, like that, that works really mm-hmm. well. Yeah. So yeah, that, that that's that's my thing. That's that combined my two passions: football, yeah. stand comedy, put them together, and yeah, that, that that's the dream. Well, I would definitely check that out. Um, well, thank you so much for coming on the show. I think that um, comes to the end of episode three. Uh, Nathan, where can our listeners and viewers find you on social media? At home. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, Just give us your address. And then, you know, we'll, we'll come around. <laughs> If I'm not there, I'll probably be at the Tesco's, to check, go to the local Tesco's, uh, you find me there. Um, no, um, uh, so social media, uh, Instagram is at Nathan Caton, uh, N-A-T-H-A-N, not O-N, and Caton is C-A-T-O-N, so Nathan.Caton. Uh, Twitter's at Nathan Caton, so is Facebook. Um, my website is NathanCaton.com, although gigs-wise, a bit lighter at the moment, but anyway, uh, that'll pick back up soon. Um, but yeah, I'm always I'm always on social media. I've been you know, doing stuff, been active, whatever. So follow me on social media, and you'll find stuff. Exactly. Give this man a follow, and we will also put all the links to your socials and your podcasts in our um, in our information. Nice one. Thank you very much. Brilliant. Oh, thanks for having me, man. All good. Thank you. Well, I hope you enjoyed that as much as we did. Don't forget, if you did enjoy it, please um, like, subscribe on whatever platform you're watching and listening on, because in that way you won't miss out on any future episodes we put out. Yeah, and don't forget to follow us on all social media platforms as well. We're on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. um, And uh, yeah, give us a follow and uh, you'll be able to keep up to date with all the the latest uh, episodes and posts that we um, put out there. But thank you for uh, listening and watching. And we'll see you next episode.